Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, we are back with our book of Psalms and today it's Psalm 97. Hallelujah. And this is a psalm to rejoice in the Lord. It says rejoice because the Lord is reigning. Hallelujah. It is a big thing to know that our God is reigning. He's seated on the throne. And that is what the psalmist is rejoicing about here. He says rejoice the Lord reigns. It says in the first verse, the Lord reigns, let the earth rejoice, let the multitude of isles be glad. Verse 2 it says, Clouds and darkness surround him. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. A fire goes before him and burns up his enemies round about. His lightnings light the world. The earth sees and trembles and it goes on till the twelfth verse. So what I want to put before you the facts that God reigns. The devil is not reigning. The devil is not in control here. The Lord is in 100% control and not 1% gone out of his control. Sometimes when we look, we say global warming and we say this is happening or that is happening. There's nothing for us to worry about because we know that our God is in full control. He is seated on the throne. He is reigning. He knows what he is doing. And he knows what is going on. Nothing is hidden from his eyes. He reigns means he reigns. He is in full control, 100%. So sometimes when we pray or sometimes we behave, even believers, like as if the devil is in control. The other day I heard somebody talking, he was preaching, but he was more talking about the devil than talking about Jesus. We need to talk more about Jesus, not the devil. He is not in control. We see things happening around us that looks demonic and it is demonic but it does not show that God is out of control. He is in full control. And some beautiful thought came <clears throat> when it says this global warming, the earth is warming up. Global warming. So the thought came that it is warming up for what? It is warming up for who? It is warming up for the coming of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is coming back to this earth and the earth is warming up to receive him. Hallelujah. Believers are warming up this earth also. It is not only pollution around us. That is to cause cato catastrophe. That is to cause floods and earthquakes and all that. But we are also warming up. Believers are warming up to receive the Lord Jesus Christ. To be ready for his coming. So we need to warm up. If we are not warmed up, if we are not in that global warming, then we are left behind. So it says the Lord reigns. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And it says righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. Our God is righteous and he is just. He cannot, he cannot answer a wrong prayer and he cannot say no to a right prayer. His answer is there, but delay does not mean denial. And he knows when to answer which prayer. That is the thing. He knows when to answer which prayer. He knows what is good for his children. And he has such a, such a mighty mind. Hallelujah. So that is what I, I mean to say. That when the Lord is fully in control, and when his rule is righteous and justice, we can expect justice. That the right prayer at the right time is justice. It is righteousness. We behave like as if God is unjust. He is not unjust. He is just. And at the right time, he knows what is good for his children. And he knows when to do what. Praise the Lord. So let us go back to our psalm. It says here, a fire goes before him and burns up his enemies round about. His lightnings light the world. The earth sees and trembles. The mountains melt like wax at the presence of the Lord. At the presence of the Lord of the whole earth. The heavens declare his righteousness and all the people see his glory. Hallelujah. When we see the glory, when we see the thundering, when we see the sea, mighty sea roaring, it is the glory of God. When we see the sun shining in its brightness, it is the glory of God. When we see the raindrops falling, it is the glory of God. Hallelujah. How the clouds form into rain, how it comes down. Science has many explanations, but the Bible gives the best explanation. It is the glory of God. God manifesting His glory to man. 
God manifesting his glory to his, his creation. That how at the right time he does what? Hallelujah. At the right time he does what? In its season he sends the rains. And how our crops grow. How we get our food. So wonderfully provided everywhere. And all is done in justice and righteousness. Hallelujah. It says here, a fire goes before him and burns up his enemies round about. Hallelujah. They are frustrated. They are put to shame. They are put to shame. Nobody can, nobody is more cleverer than the Lord. And that is what we need to stop playing politics with the Lord. Stop thinking that we are too wise for the Lord. Because the Lord is very wise. And all the games that we play, we will lose. Every game that we play against the Lord, it, we will lose. He's always the winner. So let us not, not, let us not waste our time. He's saying, His lightnings light the world. The earth sees and trembles. The mountains melt like wax at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the Lord of the whole earth. The heavens declare His righteousness, and all the people see His glory. Hallelujah. These are the things through which we could see the glory of God. Uh, we make plans for the next day without having any guarantee for the next day. But when we rise up in the morning and when we see the sun, how thankful we should be. Lord, another day, another time to see the sun rising. So many times we take it for granted. We think that we are only 16 now, 16 years old and we have time. Our life is like a bubble, James said. It's like a vapor. It's like a bubble in the water. It appears and suddenly it is gone. So when you see the sun rising in the morning, it doesn't matter what your age is. If you're fortunate to see the day, then give thanks to him. It is his goodness. It is his blessing, his gift. That is the gift that God gives. And that is what we should take it from the Lord and rejoice. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So I, want to, I don't want to divert from what, what we're seeing here. It says here, let all be put to shame who serve carved images, who boast of idols. Worship him or you, all you gods. Those that make things with their own hands. And that is what the book of Isaiah says. They cut a tree from the forest and bring it and come. They take it and they make some furniture. And then they take some wood and for the fireplace. And they, they, they form, warm themselves with that same wood. They warm themselves and they say, aha, I'm warmed. And then they take another piece and they make it into an idol. And now they say, now this is my God. And they bow down and worship it. The Bible says that their eyes are blinded. They can't see. They can't understand. They can't discern. Their spirit is dead. Their spirit is sleeping. It's bound up by the enemy, by sin, by the, by the God of this world. It has blinded them from seeing the truth. That is why Paul says, I pray for the mind of your understanding to open. When the mind of our understanding opens, we will know that this is the same piece of wood that I made furniture, the same piece of wood that I put in the fire, the same piece of wood I have made of God for myself. How could I worship the works of my hand? The other day, some boys came here to take collection. There was some puja, they came to take collection. We said we do not give for collection. We do not give for idol worship. We do not give for pujas. Because with what we do not do ourselves, we don't encourage others to do. What the Bible tells us not to do, we try to teach others not to do. If we, if we sponsor it, if we pay for it, if we give them, then that means we are encouraging them. It says over here, let all, the, let all be ashamed who serve carved images, who boast of idols, who worship gods, Worship Him, all you gods and sisters. That even the gods should worship Him. He is God. And we, the works of our hand, we should not worship. Hallelujah. And that is what it says in the second commandment. When God gave Moses the Ten Commandments, the second commandment was a very long commandment. You shall not make unto yourself anything in the likeness of anything that is in heaven, on earth, or under the earth, or in the, under the sea. You shall not bow down before, you shall not make, he says. Because the Lord's anger will be upon the third and fourth generation for worshipping idols. That is why idol worship is forbidden in the Bible. 
and we should as far as possible teach people that this is wrong hallelujah praise the lord so that is what the psalmist says here he says zion hears and is glad and the daughters of judah rejoice because of your judgment o lord for you lord are most high above all the earth you are exalted far above all gods hallelujah our god is exalted far above not only in the making not only in the thinking but in fact he is above he is the creator of this universe he did not make one thing and leave the other thing for somebody else to make our god is the creator of this whole universe and many times i have said i will repeat again not a single leaf of any tree has been created by any god except our god who is in heaven and whose name is jesus his name is jesus he is your creator he is my creator he is the creator of everything that we see around us and worship should only go to him therefore we should only worship him he alone is worthy that is the purpose of us putting these psalms before you so that you will realize that the things around you is not god god is much above what we see and what we think hallelujah praise the lord let us come back over here he said he said you are exalted far above all gods all gods so he is so high above in the 10th verse it says you who love the lord hate evil he preserves the soul of his saints he delivers them out of the hand of the wicked hallelujah when you love god hate evil when you love god keep yourself keep yourself you know god expects us to make sacrifices when jesus came he came as a sacrifice for man he came as a sacrifice it's like a bundle god has given us the full bundle was for to be sacrificed for us unto god and when jesus came for sacrifice and when he gave us everything very little he expects from us what he expects from us is that we should in these small little things in the little things that when we keep ourselves from them it's like sacrifice it's like making sacrifice he accepts it hallelujah so may god bless us through this reading of this psalm the beautiful psalm psalm 97 and i believe god has blessed you to this beautiful psalm amen